Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to a really great battle in the new Italian Indomito class destroyer, the Impetuoso D558 in its 1958 configuration. The intriguing thing is that it's about this battle and also the capabilities of the ship because it's an aircraft's worst nightmare coming from two twin 5 inch 38s with a lot of 40 millimeters proximity fuse for the 5 inch coupled with a radar at rank 2 and battle rating 4.0 and the result will prove me absolutely right because I make an ace just with aircraft and um, there is a key moment in this battle which also introduces a new mechanic and I'm split opinion about the mechanic in one sense yes it's making fights more realistic but the way that it's implemented, I'm not quite sure yet. I still have to dig a little bit into it. So this Italian destroyer, let's let's quickly give it a special rundown to see what is what. We have no armor on this ship except for the main uh, battery turrets, which have three millimeters. Then we have a speed of 65 kilometers per hour. So not the fastest, not the slowest. The ship has two twin 5 inch 38 mark 12 cannons in the really great mark 38 mounting one in the front one in the rear and so if you go bow in you basically have the feeling of the uh missile apprentice the bravi the soviet destroyer at a much higher battle rating of 5.3 and um, yeah the much higher rate of fire for the 5 inch 38s give you a little bit of a boost. I think it's 2.8 seconds. And uh, when then the um, ready rack is used up, it's still a formidable reload. And you have a lot of ammunition, uh, 1,440 rounds for those four guns. And then you have a lot of 40 millimeters. Uh, you have four twin mountings, two per side, and two quadruple mountings, one per side. So that gives you a lot of daka daka. Then we quickly have to talk about um, the depth charge launcher because it seems to be a hidden gem, but it's incredibly difficult to make the 305 millimeter BAS depth charge launcher work. You have 67, no, 76 uh, charges from this triple launcher at the front but it's in the air for a very long time and it's uh, at a fixed distance the impact so really difficult to make work but when you hit you hit the enemy with 70 kilograms of torpex being a TNT equivalent of 112 kilograms that is um, a lot that is almost as much as you get from the German coastal fleet Lübeck and that has a 375mm M50 Bofors. So it's even stronger than this. And uh, then we have to talk about the torpedoes. And they are garbage. You have only four of them. Two per side. And you have to reload them. And they are in fixed mounted. And the torpedoes themselves are also not great. The SI 270s um, are fast with 89 kilometers per hour, but only have four kilometer range. And uh, 270 kilograms of TNT equivalent. With the torpedo mod that you have to unlock, it is uh, still 270 kilograms, 70 kilometers per hour, and 10 kilometer range. So they are not useless. But they leave things to be desired. In their handling, they are useless. You have to few off them. And uh, we now then have a severe um, interaction with enemy torpedoes. I did not see that there were torpedoes in the water. I was uh, focused on gunboating here. And it's um, around this time when then I get the warning. Way too late again. But at least I got a warning of the torpedoes. And um, I was like damn what's that blinking thing and i run into a full spread i avoid the rear one but then i catch actually two i'm severely flooding it's an unrepairable breach 
and I think to myself, okay, let's take this guy down. Let's just take him down. There is nothing less, uh, nothing left that I can do except extinguishing the fire, trying to get my machinery back up, and I'm dropping to 18% buoyancy. But a couple of things. First of all, I'm not dead yet. I'm dead in the water, but I'm not actually dead. Then it stops at 18%, so my bulkheads are, for the moment, at least holding, and I'm not listing. So I was, like, going down over the entire length of the ship, more or less. The problem is, and this is one of those design features that um, I remember now um, Drakini fell discussing in some of his uh, videos, that not all the machinery is in one place. So I still have half my machinery left, and the other one being flooded. Um, here I tried to take down this patrol boat, and um, I was still a little bit shocked by what happened. And I just miss. That's the downside of four guns. And I tried to crawl into B, and uh, there is another destroyer I have to take on him just with the front gun. I cannot turn broadside, otherwise I would ram into the um, into the rock. And um, I need to cap because the enemy has A. And the Italian patrol boats at around this battle rating are not that great. So there is that. Um, I now have the ability to be somewhat in cover, but now I have to turn. So, slowly but steadily, we take this guy down, and we got him. The other one is down as well, the team actually working over the enemy team as intended, and uh, this patrol boat, well, I can't shoot him, and um, what can he do? Capture A a second time? I don't think so. And actually he got uh, killed by a Soviet boat. And you can see the remaining speed I have left with half the machinery. 16 kilometers per hour. That is not a lot. That is not a lot. Come on. Come on. It's so painful to, to watch this now. But it was even more painful playing it. Because crawling down into the... Crawling into the cap... Um, being half your machinery down is not fun. Okay. Oh, that's a Trent, uh, Trento? Well, the US light cruiser at 5.0. That's actually garbage, but for you it poses a big threat. And uh, finally, we cap for the first time. And now I think to myself, okay, what to do next? It's um, one of those battles where um, I'm not fully spaded, and this is the, the battle I intend to spade the ship with. Not too difficult, to be honest, if you have a somewhat capable ship at uh, rank 2. Um, the RP requirements are not that great. So, I was really starting to like the ship, surviving two torpedoes. I'm not quite sure what torpedoes they were, but yeah, let's quickly talk about this mechanic. I think it's realistic to some degree, but it's also really punishing. If an entire section is destroyed, you flood more or less evenly and don't list, which you can still live with quite literally. And it also offers the possibility to uh, not take a torpedo to the bow and the stern and then repair and... Um, yeah, act like you have not been hit with a torpedo at all, like with big battleships uh, in the past few patches, you know. And uh, I still think that there is some usability of the previous uh, mechanic or uh, tactic, rather, that if you took, if you know you're going to take a torpedo because you couldn't dodge in time, you saw it too late, etc., but you still could go bow in and exactly take it with the tip of the bow then you would be at a max distance from your ammo rack and machinery. And that's still viable, but now it costs something. On the other hand, if you sink down, and this is especially interesting for, I, I say, battleships or cruisers with really good armor, um, especially the Des Moines class, 
you can lower the accessibility of the magazine and oh this is interesting you see that's the pr7 i think and he is actually firing the missiles and i'm flooding again uh, but he didn't destroy something new so i actually could uh, once i realized it um repair the leak after i gunned him down and yep we we just made it with eight percent of buoyancy left and we go back up then to 18 percent and there are the aircraft and um they will be interesting to deal with you see the radar it's it's not perfect um i can hold the lock forever um but i have still enough five inch 38s left to deal with them and he's diving it's somewhat tricky since you have to lead the lead indicator correctly depending on what the aircraft is doing if it's accelerating if it is slowing down diving climbing whatever but i have somewhat a bit of uh, experience and since he is like dodging wildly and i have a japanese destroyer that i have to deal with um, i refocus here on this ship i load the high yield sap well high yield i say it's still just over one kilogram of tnt per shell but you make substantially more damage per gun or per shell hit than with the high pen quote unquote high pen low yield shell so this is why i always take the two different shell types with me uh, i have not forgotten about the aircraft um, but him circling at five kilometers distance it is um somewhat debatable what to do and you can see that a lot of players have left the battle on both sides and i'm actually reversing which is still incredibly slow okay um i just changed the shell type not trying to scare him trying to get him with the first strike and then we got him and that poor spitfire just had a low uh, bomb um, a low yield bomb or a small light bomb rather okay i'm looking for other aircraft um and then i realize okay uh we're about to get c and that f5 f f6 f5 actually used the tiny tim correctly this time on the ship so this is a bit bad because um the skr7 was about to get uh into a if i'm not mistaken and i just can't hit this guy you can see he was climbing uh f f away from the shell which then still fused but did no damage there is a plane coming in from the other direction and you have to prioritize them and hello there <laughs> and i cannot really hit this guy um this is always one of those weaknesses uh, aiming with a destroyer at very short range and I have to switch to the bow force and then aim somewhere to get him walk in the shells we switch back to the 5 inch 38 and uh, yeah B actually got decapped by that plane good effort and come on you can see I hit him good but we also lost the lock for a moment and he is now really damaged where's the other plane oh he actually went close we got the kill on the i16 and we got another hit the shell cam versus aircraft is uh really uh really helpful i think because it shows you where the shell is actually going um how you miss are you under leading over leading are you aiming too high or too low it's uh, really good for uh, getting experience versus aircraft which I have demonstrated here uh, quite a bit. Okay, and now we go into B yet again. Four ship kills, three aircraft kills, and I'm not done yet. So I think I can easily uh, cap this, but I get shot by someone. I have only 12% crew left, so I'm really battered. And there is a Russian destroyer uh, shooting at me. So I don't try to gun him down. Um, 
it would be an unfair fight. I tried to take out as many guns out of uh, commission as possible, and therefore I use HE with a little bit of splash. And uh, yeah, by some miracle, we survived it. He didn't hit us there where it would hurt. Okay, uh, let the team deal with him. What's left of our team, as you can see on the map, um, they're far, far away. Uh, in my battered destroyer, I'm really, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really in trouble. And now B gets capped again, and I wonder what is it? Has one of those destroyers actually swung around? If you have noticed, this was one of those cuts where um, I was cutting out uh, two, three minutes just trying to reverse. And there is the aircraft, and uh, yeah, both of us deal with them. Um, it was a good effort by the cruiser, and he actually beached. And this is where I then finally, after another painfully slow minutes, captured B for the third time, and we got it. And this was the winning blow. Now, this felt really critical. Five aircraft, four kills, and this is really interesting because um, I'm only number two. Despite three caps, five aircraft kills, four kills, and three assists. And um, yeah, we make um, quite a bit of civil lines, 75,000 for a win with a premium account on a tier two tech tree ship. And yeah, I don't know how exactly the score points are calculated, to be honest. Um, but it just shows how little aircraft kills, especially in low-tier aircraft, is worth it. And I loved this battle. I thought it was fun, and I hope you think this as well. It's one of those few battle videos that I made lately. And uh, yeah, we then finished spading this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.